Hello everybody and welcome to round three of the unofficial tour series season two live on RGT and brought to you by Road to Glory. So we are today finishing off our three stage mini tour of Scotland. We started Edinburgh, we popped into Motherwell on Saturday and today we are in Aberdeen. This is a new course for the unofficial tour series, didn't feature in season one. But we are up there today. So there we are. There's the Edinburgh race. That was a very challenging race with a pretty nasty climb on each lap. As we mentioned, Motherwell, which we did race in season one. And here we are. Then there's Aberdeen on the left hand side. It's a fairly flat course, uh, fairly short as well. Each lap only around about one kilometer. And then we are off to Durham next week for round five and then down to Bath for round six. Uh, that will be next week's courses. And then we'll be finishing up in Portsmouth, right down on the south coast, opposite end of the country to where we are today in Aberdeen. And uh, yeah, that's coming up in three weeks today. So uh, still plenty of racing to come. So let's recap A class then, Chris McDonald. He's currently the leader of the A class. He took second place in that Edinburgh race, followed by fourth place up in Motherwell. James Malville and Steve Dring, they're in tied for second at the moment, both with 100 points, one win each, and they are both on the start line today. So it'll be interesting to see which of them can keep up their 100% record. And then Fleming back in fourth place, and then myself and Jorgen van Baer is currently tied in fifth place, each with a, a third place each. And it's seven races overall for this series, but it's your best of five. So if you miss one, it's not the end of the world. I missed the Motherwell stage on Saturday, but hopefully I will be able to complete some of the others and get myself up that leaderboard. So Chris McDonald is in today. I can see James Malville on the start line. Steve Dring is there. And a few other new names as well, but Hepburn and McAlpine, a couple of other Scottish riders making their way in for the, the Aberdeen stage today. Then in the B class, currently Rick Barbera, currently sitting top of the pile with a first place on the Edinburgh stage, followed by second place in the Motherwell stage. So he's currently on 112 points. And then Simon Miller on 87, and Matthias Goosens on third, only two points behind. And then we've got Gabor Nagy, and then Paul Dring, Peter's brother, sorry, Steve's brother, I don't know who Peter is, and uh, he's also on 60 points, he's taken a win as well. The, the Dring brothers both winning their respective races in Motherwell. So it'll be interesting to see how they get on today. And then that's followed by Julian Fussell and Rob Miller, both on 58 points. And Joran Goosens on 45 points. Not sure if he's related to Matthias Goosens there. So uh, possibly you might see a bit of teamwork from, from those guys. The two SDW guys as well might see a bit of teamwork from them, from Simon and Julian. And uh, so it's going to be a quick one today. 26 kilometres, just around about, just over one kilometre per lap. Let's take a look at that in a bit more detail then. So uh, we've got a slight downhill off the start after that first left-hander. Then a little bit of a zigzag in the bottom left-hand corner before we then have a return up the opposite side and a little bit of a climb back up to the start line. Nothing too serious, only a couple of one or two percent. And overall, it's nine metres of elevation per lap over that one kilometre. So. Nothing to get too worried about. Might just make the final sprint a little bit interesting with a little bit of an uphill drag. Uh, as we go around the course, we're going to have a look to see exactly what percentages it maxes out at. Uh, it is 25 laps a day as always, uh, but as this is a shorter lap, I'm expecting it to be a quicker race then. So uh, we are 30 seconds away from the start. So let's cut across then to the two respective start lines, Class A, and Class B. So Class A is for FTP for riders of greater than 3.8 watts per kilo. Class B for below that figure. Means everyone should have a nice good race. So let's get powered up then. Five seconds to go. Don't want to miss the start. 
as I normally put the ass off the line and away we go. I say that and I'm the one who's shooting off. So we've got seven riders in class A. This might not sound like many, but I can make it a very cat and mouse like race. You do have to be alert the whole time. Looks like we've got three riders in the GCN kit, the three Scottish riders. Perhaps they're going to be working together. So this first lap then, just getting a bit of a sighter in. In the B race, around about 20 riders. Already looks like there's a little bit of a split there. 13 riders in that front group, 14 riders. And then there's a little bit of a gap, back to another dozen or so. And here we see the round two winner, Mr. Dring, just putting in a little bit of an effort off the front. Already opened up a 20 meter gap. So one minute 30 lap, that's pretty quick. That's gonna put the race under 40 minutes. And he's absolutely motoring. Paul Dring there, leaving that pack for dead at the moment. But, Despite being a short lap, there's still 25 kilometers to go. It's gonna take a big effort to keep everyone at bay for 25 kilometers. And there we see Rick Barbera. First place in round one, second place in round two. On the front there, just trying to pull it back a little bit. And this could just be Paul Dring just trying to whittle down the size of that group early doors. Obviously when you get towards the finish, the fewer numbers in the pack, the better your odds of a good result are. So he might not be looking to stay away for the whole race, but just put a little bit of hurt on those early riders. Put a bit of a marker down for, hey guys, if you want to beat me, you're going to have to work hard. He's going to lap off the front then. And he's lapping just slightly quicker than the A class. But we can see there now Barbera just coming across and the pack coming behind. They've got a little bit more momentum. They've got that draft saving. They can rotate, take turns. Not have to put in such a hard, consistent effort. As we lap the camera bot in the Class A race. Mostly all together at the moment. Looks like the Romanian rider Tiberiu. It's just been slightly dropped, well, has been dropped there, half a lap back. But the other six riders all together, possibly Tiberio there, just entering the, the wrong category. Might have intended to go into the B class. You see James Malville, the winner of season one making sure he doesn't get dropped as we round that final corner. As you can see in the top right, 2.6% gradient. Slightly levels off for the last 50 meters as we approach the line, but it will be an uphill drag to the finish. So once again, we're able to bring you both races side by side. Let's see the ZMS live streams. Quite spread out there in the Class B race. 
Hustle there from Southburn District Wheelers, just trying to make sure he's not dropped. Barbera there, slightly on the wrong side of a gap. And Hibbard, just trying to make sure he stays with that group. So front group of 15. And already another little split there, look, six or so. The 25 meter gap. Ring is in that front group. Barbera is in behind. It all comes back together. I'd like to see a little bit of that on the uphill and the downhill. Just a little bit of separation. You can see Bing and Malva here. Just tail gunning, just watching the pack ahead of them. Not in any danger, just there. There's Neuver, the Portuguese rider, continues on the front of the B class, putting out some good numbers. Keeping it stretched out, keeping that pressure on. These 90 degrees bends, it's easy for it to be strung out and for you to fall a few meters back through those corners. Gaps can easily form. You've always got to be alert. So this rear straight is slightly downhill out of the corner. Gives riders a little bit of a run. And then it's uphill for the second half before hitting the left hander and then the run to the line. about 140 meters from that corner to the finish line. So there is potentially an opportunity to go a little bit early, be the first one into that corner. That slight uphill finish will reduce any graph benefit from riders chasing. We'll make it slightly easier just to stay away. So back to the B class then. Neuver still pushing hard on the front and it's doing some damage. That group has dropped from 15 down to 10. Like our top few riders have made that split though. Miller, Barbera, Dring, Gusens, Nagy, Fussell. No Simon Miller though. Not sure if he made the start line today, but he's not there in the top 10. He's currently sat second in the overall. Chris McDonald makes the move in the A class. It just causes a bit of separation out the back. Hepburn and Dring just slightly gapped. You can see Dring there trying to bring it back. He's going to catch McAlpine. Just teetering now on the edge of coming back together. Hepburn there is not quite out of sight, 50 meters further back. He 
wants to get back on, he's got a push now. But these front four, they can see bring off the back and they're not waiting around. They know he's a competitor and a challenger. Here's a chance for them to put some hurt on, take some turns on the front, try and stretch that gap out. The lap time goes down to 126.5. Neuver in the B class, 50 meters off the front, holding strong. That chase, we've lost a couple more. Quant and Connolly have fallen off the back. Noy, we're doing some damage on the front then. Surrendering just yet, trying to catch up to Dring. But Dring is now 120 meters behind this front quartet. This quartet might ease up though, they might think their work is done. Might just open the door for Dring to come back in. See that lap back up to 132. Slowed down a bit now. Or we might see Hepburn and Dream come together. The two of them teaming up. They could take turns to try and pull this back. This race is flying by. It is a quick one. See Class B are currently almost 300 meters ahead of Class A. Neuber doesn't look like he's easy enough at all. He comes round to lap some of the riders there. But he's not getting away. It's still only 50 meters. He's putting in a lot of effort to stay there. And as they come past these lap riders, everybody gets a little bit of extra help. And now Julian Fussell also just gapped off the back. So that group is dwindling. Moivo was up against nine. Now he's only up against six. The longer he can hold on, the more that pack's gonna reduce in size. And that's just going to give him better odds as we go on. So we're on to lap 10 of 25. And class A, this quartet then, 250 meters ahead of Dring. So it looks like they put him to the sword early. He won't be winning today. I doubt he'll be winning today. It will take something impressive to come back from that position on his own. As Dring and Hepburn now do come together. A lot of traffic there in the Class B race. As they come around to lap one of the OTR riders. People jumping on into that group. 
that will give the chase group a bit more draft benefit, a bit more, a bit more momentum. Might just give them a little bit of assistance against Neubo, but his lead now has gone out to 160 meters. But look at his power numbers. 5.9 consistently there. Six watts per kilo. Maybe he's entered the wrong category. I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna call him on it. You know, he's destroying this field. 460 watts, solid, that is impressive. I think the chasing riders would do just as well to let him go. Because that's a rider that really should be in class A. This is a ranked race though, so eventually with the ranking system, we will see riders automatically categorized into the correct division. Good to see Tiberiu there, just being lapped for the second time, but they're still going. That's good to see, not giving up. Another one minute 32 lap, really consistent once again. So perhaps that group has sat up then, that chase group of five. They're not dropping those lap riders at all. All of those leads going out, so maybe they've realised he's in the wrong, wrong group and they're just letting him be. Oh, catching my breath for a moment. in the A race then, look pretty content at the moment. No more attacks just yet. Although in class B, just like the OTR rider, who's a lap down, is trying to push ahead of that chase group, keeping themselves on lapped. That chase group responds, it comes back to him. A little bit, Kate. There will be for the sprint, don't worry. So I do know that the, the race organizer, Simon Russell, is not racing today, unfortunately but you will be reviewing the results before they are finalized. Just to make sure there's no superhuman or even just above category performances. I know there's a bit of leeway. If you enter the A class and you put out 3.9, you know, that's just a good day. But if you're putting out 4.5 and you're in A class, sorry, B class, and I think Simon will force you to move up, which is good. We could use a few more numbers in the A class, but it doesn't make it boring by having fewer numbers. Sometimes it makes it more interesting, makes it a bit easier to attack, a bit easier to get people off guard. As Melville, just as I say that, puts in an 11 watt per kilo effort. Just as I had the same idea. 
keeping everyone on their toes. I got the heart rate up another 10 BPM. I'm sure McAlpine was panicking for a moment there. He was the one at the back. Nagy, Matthias Gussens, Rob Miller, Rick Barbera, and Paul Dring. That group of five in the chase group. With some friends for company there. Bob Gorman, Morale, the French rider. And I reckon that's Neil Pugh from OTR. Getting some screen time for his sponsors. On the river, e racing team. They do a lot of organising of events. Flemish for beginners, Spanish for intermediates. Ah, there's Malville attacked again. Now I'm breathing heavily, Kate. <laughs> Marvel is always a lively rider. Very aggressive. Very good at attack and recovery. At putting the hurt onto other riders. So here he goes again. back together. This is what I'm talking about. A small field for aggressive riding. mandatory for heart rate but it is beneficial perhaps it's a performance verification my heart rate there oh. jumped up nicely Barbara and Rob Miller then putting in a little move in the B class. I've got 
10 meter gap. Put the three other riders, close that up. That's Brzezinski for OTR there. Currently in 12th place. As they come up to another little group of riders. Like you see, some of the chase pack trying to use them to leapfrog. So that group in the B class are still around about 250 meters ahead of the A class. We're in a bit of a slugfest at the moment, this front four. Taking swings at each other. Putting the hat on. Trying to wear each other down a little bit. And that group is swelling in the B class. That can make it dangerous for those front group of riders. on those corners you can find yourself at the back and with a little bit of a gap Three quarters distance done then, almost, we'll be after this lap. So it looks like the B class, they've shaken off some of those lap riders. front quartet then they're just going to come round and soon they're going to lap Hepburn and Dring who got gapped about seven or eight laps into the race in that big fast then seven riders there five of them in that chase group I'm going to call it the league group. Neuver is in a league of his own. I'm sure he's going to get a DQ, but I'll leave that up to the stewards. So these five riders behind are going to be fighting hard for points and the podium, the win's still up on the table I'm sure. I'm just being focused. That's why I'm a little bit slow on the commentary at the moment. I believe ZMS is getting right in on the action. I think there's some great footage there. We 
We've got five laps to go. We are right into the pointy end of the race. Like McDonald's been dropped then. That penultimate corner on the last lap. Possibly caught up in some traffic. Now it's down to a front three. Ignore the rider in blue. They are a lap down. Four kilometers to go. Still a front group of Nagy, Matthias Goosens, Rick Barbera, Paul Dring, and Rob Miller fighting it out for the win. Ignore Neuber, he's going to be DQ'd. I just sending some in text messages, trying to get Dring to drop back, he's interfering. That's not good. Let these riders fight it out. Three laps to go. So we should see the Class B finish ahead of class A today, only just. Uh, it gets Steve Neuber, he's two kilometers up the road. A couple of the riders in the class B race who have been lapped need to think about dropping away now. Let the riders duke it out for themselves without interference, please.
And ultimate that then. Two K to go. Do with getting past this rider for the last lap. Ah. So both races are on to the final lap. Gonna be close for these two races at the finish. There's Noivo, the notional winner. Marble got me on the line. Looks <sighs> 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 like Barbera from Dring in the B class. <sighs> 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 finish. Ooh. Just catch my breath. I tried to go a little early. See if I can get a bit of a gap before that corner. Almost worked. Malville was just close enough. Just managed to hang into my slipstream. That they speeds up to the line. He got enough of a, a push for bonus from that, and he was pushing hard. We saw that on repeated laps. He's not a weak rider, that's for sure. Tried to catch him off guard. Drop McAlpine, we were three seconds ahead of him in the end. So, wasn't in vain. McDonald coming up in fourth. Then it'll be Steve Dring in fifth place in the A class. That's the top 10 finished. In the B class, we'll just watch a few more riders come round. Here's Steve Dring then in the A class coming up to the line. Oh. 
last week's winner. Fifth place today. We've still bagged some points for that. And it is the best of five, so certainly not the end of his challenge for the title. But two wins out of two for James Melville. Hepburn, he's also up over the line then. Right, let's bring you the full results then, courtesy of RGTDB, for all your event scheduling and race results I get it, live updating. So, just to confirm then, James Melville, your winner. 38 minutes, 19 seconds. Followed by Lister. So close, 0 0.07 seconds behind. Those two, Captain McAlpine, off guard just at the end there. He's three seconds further back. Chris McDonald in fourth, followed by Steve Dring and Ian Hepburn. So two out of two for James Melville. He'll be up on 200 points. Got 85 points for today's effort. I think that will move me up into second or third overall, perhaps. See if I've managed to leapfrog McDonald. I'm sure there'll be some good racing over the next five races. Not too late for four races. Not too late to join in. Check out RGT DB for all of the upcoming races. And there you go, look, pass people without, sorry, a bit of a chuckle there. Paolo Neuber, 35.34, 6.22 watts per kilo, just a little bit above 3.8 limit. A couple of riders there, just slightly over, but as I say, that's based on your one hour FTP, and these guys are riding at 40 minutes or so, so you'd expect them to be just a little bit over, potentially. But nothing that's off the chart there. They all look like they were riding pretty hard to me. They weren't holding anything back. So Rick Barbera, followed by Paul Dring, the battle of those two. Rick getting revenge for the last race where it was, those top two were reversed. Grissom's up there again, Nagy. Good result for Rob Miller, climbing a couple places. Chris Donnelly in seventh. Paco Rodriguez in eighth. Christian Quant is ninth, and Julian Fussell breaking into the top 10. He'll be picking up a few more points as well. Right, thanks a lot, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that racing today. I certainly did. It'd be good to have a few more riders in there, but it's fun regardless. 0.97 intensity factor for me for that race. So the next race is coming up on Thursday. And you can find all the details for that at rgtdb.com. Hope to see you then. I will probably be commentating. Not sure if I'll be racing. So I've got some outdoor racing coming up at the weekend that I'm looking forward to. So I don't want to go and ruin my legs for that one. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your comments and your likes. Catch you all next time for the unofficial tour series presented by Road to Glory on RGT.